everyone, I'm Bailey, this is the voice of Carnival Cruisers Only, and welcome to the Carnival Freedom Review. This is the first time I've ever done commentary for a video, but this video will be very similar to the Carnival Paradise review I did about a month and a half ago. In the video, I'll do an overview based off of the ship's statistics, and then I will have several categories that the ship can earn up to 10 points in each category, and at the end there will be an overall score. Now let's get right into the overview of the Carnival Freedom. The Carnival Freedom is in the Conquest class of ships, and it is sisters with the Conquest, the Valor, the Glory, and the Liberty. Construction began on the Freedom in 2006 and was completed in March of 2007, and in May of 2007 she was delivered to Carnival. She was built in Fincantieri, Italy, and is about 952 feet long, 156 feet wide, and has a cruising speed of about 21 knots, which translates to about 24 miles per hour. She has a passenger capacity of 2,974 passengers and 1,150 crew. She weighs 110,000 tons, which in my opinion is the perfect mid-sized ship, in between the Fantasy class, the smallest class of carnival ships, and the Vista class, the biggest class of carnival ships. This was my first time on a Conquest class ship, but if you've been on any of the other four in the class, this ship will be very similar, and if you are going on a similar ship, in the class, then the review for this will be about the same in regards to the other ships of the Conquest class. Now let's get into the full review of the Carnival Freedom. The first category of the review will be the stateroom accommodations on board the ship. The most abundant style of room you'll find on this ship, or most ships in general, is an interior room. These rooms come in multiple different variations, but do not include a balcony or a window. Interior rooms come with multiple different layouts, depending on what kind of beds you prefer. This includes two twins that convert to a king, pullmans that fold out of the ceiling so they can be out of your way during the day, and single and double sofa beds. In my personal opinion, interior rooms are fantastic. First of all, because they're usually cheaper than other options. Second of all, because these rooms get very dark at night if you turn off all the lights and it makes it very easy to sleep. And in my opinion, these beds are very comfortable in any room. But of course, if you really want a view of the ocean, or your own balcony, or if you want to go all out and buy a suit, then these next options will be absolutely perfect for you. On decks 1 and 2 of the Freedom, there are ocean view cabins, which are just like interior cabins, but with either a porthole, a mid-size, or very large window with a fantastic view of the ocean. Now these next rooms are balcony cabins and suits, the typically more expensive rooms. These cabins, like the other two types of cabins, have connecting staterooms which are perfect for families in large groups so you can go to each other's room without having to go out in the hallway, and handicap available staterooms. The different variations of balcony rooms on board the Freedom include balconies, extended balconies, premium and premium vista balconies, junior suits, ocean suits, grand suits, and the biggest and most expensive and extravagant, the captain suit. With my experience, the interior room has worked perfectly. It's usually the cheapest option. It works well, and since you're not in the room that much, or at least I'm not in the room that much on a ship, it works perfectly. But if you are going to spend a lot of time in the room, I would suggest going for an ocean view or a balcony room. But if you are looking to save a couple bucks, the interior room will work fine, and it will comfortably fit four people very easily, and it will do its job perfectly fine. For the accommodations category, the Carnival Freedom will be earning an 8.5. It could have more options, such as the Cloud9 Spa Suites on board the newer ships, but it's got plenty of options and you most certainly won't have a hard time finding the perfect room for you. Now the next category is going to be about deck space and how much of it does the Carnival Freedom have, which is something that is very important to me and I know it is to a lot of cruisers out there. The Freedom has a pretty good bit of deck space. Coming from Deck 14, aka Deck 13, and Deck 12, there is the Serenity Adults Only Retreat for 21 and older. On Decks 9, 10, and 11, there is so much open air deck space, especially around the two midship main pools, and there's lots above the aft pool, which is adults only as well. But I would suggest, if you really want some peace and quiet, to go down to Deck 3 on the port or starboard side of the ship. There is decks under the lifeboats, and under the lifeboats there's just a long strip of just chairs and open air deck space, and it is very quiet and there's usually no one there, and you can just sit there and listen to the sounds of the ocean. I highly recommend you try it out. 
For the deck space category, I'm going to give the Carnival Freedom an 8. There's plenty of deck space, but on sea days, it could get quite a bit crowded, but not too crowded compared to some ships. But overall, there's plenty of deck space, and you shouldn't have trouble finding a seat or a table or something that you need. Category 3 will be pool areas, which is something I find very important when it comes to picking a fun ship. The Carnival Freedom has three main pools. The main pool being the one under the movie screen, which is amazing at night to watch movies in. Then the one under the Twister water slide, which is very fun for all ages. And then the very aft pool, which has two hot tubs and the pool for adults only. The aft pool also has a retractable roof, which makes it great for bad weather days or when it's cold or at night. There's also an abundance of hot tubs present throughout the ship. The two in the back, several around the two main pools, and then there's even some at the adults only retreat. And then of course there's the twister water slide by the two main pools. It's very fun and especially for little ones. It'll get them excited and keep them busy throughout the day, especially on sea days. For the Carnival Freedom's pool areas, I'm gonna give it a seven. It's got plenty of pools, and it will give you just enough or just what you need, and you probably won't even notice anything, but compared to the new ships, it's lacking in the pool department just a little bit, and especially since it lacks a Carnival Waterworks, which is something many look forward to when going on a fun ship. But when all's said and done, it's got plenty of pool space and great pools. Category 4 will be all about where you can get a bite to eat, rather that be somewhere you can get a quick bite to eat or something like the main dining room. To start off, I'm going to talk about the Chic and the Posh dining rooms, the two main dining rooms on board the ship, which are both absolutely fantastic and provide great service and great food. The staff is absolutely no exception to the fact that I've never had bad service on board a Carnival ship. And the food in the main dining room is absolutely outstanding, and every night they blew me away with how much they had to offer and how good the food was. I'd probably even say that this was the best food I've ever had on a cruise in general. And then on top of the main dining rooms, of course you have the best thing ever that's ever happened to this earth, and that would be Guy's Burger Joint and the Blue Iguana Cantina. Guy's Burgers sells burgers from 12 to 6 p.m. on board the ship, and they are handcrafted from Guy Fieri's recipe, and they are absolutely fantastic. And then across the way, you have Blue Iguana Cantina, which sells breakfast burritos, and for lunch through 6 o'clock, sells burritos and tacos, which are also fantastic. To add to all this glorious food, there's also the Lido Buffet on Deck 9 aft. The Lido serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day, and it serves food from all over the world and all over the United States. The food here is great, especially when you need to get a quick bite to eat. And of course, right next to the Lido Buffet is the 24-hour soft serve ice cream, which is amazing, and I eat way too much of it whenever I go on any cruise. And behind the Lido Buffet is the Seafood Shack and the 24-hour Pizza Pirate, for the food category, I'm going to give the Carnival Freedom a 9 because it has absolutely outstanding food and amazing service and I can assure you, you will never go hungry while on this ship, ever. The fifth category will be entertainment and things to do around the ship. One of the places that hosts lots of the events on board the ship is the 70s nightclub. This room can be a traditional nightclub doing traditional nightclub things, or it can be a place for teens and kids to dance for their special events. Then you have the Warehouse Arcade, which is a great place to waste a ton of money on a claw machine. Then you have the countless number of bars, such as the Red Frog Pub, which plays live music and has party games, the Red Frog Rum Bar, and the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar, which are both at the main pool deck. And then you have the Alchemy Bar, which is a place where you can make your own cocktails, and then there's several other bars scattered throughout the ship. The next big place for entertainment on board the Freedom is the Victoriana Main Lounge on the front of the ship, where lots of stuff happens throughout the cruise. An example of what you can find that goes on in here would be Playlist Productions, the Hasbro the Game Show, and stuff like comedy and magic shows. Personally for me, I'm not the type to like theater productions, but things such as the 80s show that you see right now, it was absolutely phenomenal and it blew me away with the effects and the singing and the dancing, so I really suggest you try going to one of the shows, especially the 80s show, it is fantastic. The next place to catch a laugh or something to drink or someone to listen to who's really bad at singing is the lounge in the back of the ship. Here they have things like the Punchline or Comedy Club, a bar, and of course karaoke which is hysterical sometimes. On deck 11 you have the sports deck and here you can play volleyball, basketball, and of course signature mini golf. On top of all of this you have the kids clubs starting with Camp Ocean. 
This club is for children 11 and under, and then the next club up is Circle C for 12 through 14 year olds. And then the last club is Club O2, which is for kids 15 through 17 years old. Being someone who's experienced all three of these clubs, I would definitely suggest if you're young or old enough to do it, that you try it out. It is really fun, and no matter what type of person you are, if you're introverted, if you're extroverted, it doesn't matter. You're going to have so much fun in any of these clubs. And for your parents out there, this is a great way for you to drop off the kids and go have a night to yourself, no matter what their age or what club they're assigned to. The list of entertainment can go on and on and on and on for this ship and any carnival ship in general. There is so much to do on board and you will never get bored no matter how or what kind of fun you like to have and no matter what age you are. For this category, I'm going to give the Carnival Freedom a 9.5. It has an excellent amount of entertainment on board. The sixth and final category will be Ports of Call or where the ship stops and its destinations. As of right now, the Carnival Freedom has several itineraries leaving out of Galveston, Texas. The first one being Cozumel, Mexico, Belize, and Mahogany Bay, Roatan. These are the ports that we visited while we were on the Carnival Freedom. And as of the itinerary scheduled through 2018-2019, the Carnival Freedom will be doing the same itinerary, and also it will be going to Ocho Rios, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. The same itinerary, but instead of Ocho Rios, Montego Bay, Jamaica, and the next itinerary being a five day to Yucatan and Cozumel, Mexico, and the next being a seven day to Key West, Nassau, and Freeport, Bahamas, and there's also a six day to Costa Maya, Belize, and Cozumel. And there's another six day with the same itinerary, but instead of Belize, replace that with Mahogany Bay, Roatan. And finally, we get into the big cruises, with the next one being an eight day to Key West, Freeport, Half Moon Cay, aka Carnival's private island, and Nassau, Bahamas. Next, we have a 14 day to Grand Cayman, Aruba, Caraco, Cartagena, and a partial transit through the Panama Canal, Limon, and Cozumel. And last but certainly not least, we have another 14 day to Grand Cayman, Aruba, Caraco, a partial transit through the Panama Canal, Limon, Mahogany Bay, and Cozumel. For the Ports of Call or Destinations category, I'm going to give the Carnival Freedom a perfect 10. For the next couple years and the rest of the 2018 season, the Carnival Freedom has so many different itineraries that it will be cruising on, which means there are plenty of options when it comes to booking a cruise on board this ship. The overall score of the Carnival Freedom is a 52, which doesn't really mean anything, but it's just there to give you a scale compared to the other videos that I will make and have made. With my experience, the Carnival Freedom is a fantastic ship, and I would highly recommend it to anyone, first time or multiple time cruisers. I personally have been on several Carnival ships, and this one is probably my second favorite, just behind the Carnival Dream. And with that said, this completes the Carnival Freedom review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.